Now that the transfer portal is winding towards its conclusion, we talk about the top additions in this Ole Miss transfer portal class in both 2023 and for the program as a whole. There's a subtle difference, but one that you might be interested in. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. My Twitter account's down there. Also, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Also, thank you very much for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. So do us a favor, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications and participate in the conversation by commenting down below and upvoting the video itself. We'd appreciate it very much. Anyway, the transfer portal season is winding up. There's still a couple of days before the drop ad period hits to where professors can finagle what's going on. So it still might add, okay? But as it sits right now, when we look at a near totality of the transfer players coming in in the early window, I think it's pretty fair to say we have some big winners in the 2023 team class, and then we have some big winners in the program class. First of all, I want to start with the number one program win. We're going to start with the program winners, and that is Walker Howard. This is a big-time quarterback from Lafayette, Louisiana, and he elicits a lot of the same traits as Matt Corral. And once he develops, and I don't think people should honestly rule him out, in this quarterback competition, but once he develops, he has a chance to be really good. You're talking about somebody with elite anticipation, um, uses the middle of the field well, he's very decisive with the football, and he's very toolsy. Honestly, whenever you look at his high school film from Huddle, it looks like Matt Corral out there throwing football around. Now, that was on a team with Jack Besh, and there was like a lot of a symbiotic Matt Corral type Elijah Moore relationship with him and Jack Besh, but I think he can get here and develop something similar in the future, and I think he might have plans with our second big program signing of the transfer portal, and that is Chris Marshall, the former top 50 wide receiver, or top 50 player, top wide receiver out of um, Texas, went to Texas A&M. He flashed. He absolutely flashed. But it was a little bit disappointing. It was up. It was down. There were some rumors of some locker room stuff. All of this stuff going on. So he's going to come to Ole Miss where pro mindset is a thing. And this is going to be a real culture that he gets put into. And pro mindset, despite what anybody else says, is just doing what you're supposed to do in protecting the team. That, that, that is 100% the most important thing is doing what you're supposed to do in protecting the team. If you break that number one rule, it's going to be hard for you to come back no matter what the situation. But if he does it well, he has immense talent. Immense talent. And his catch radius, everything whenever you watch his highlights reminds you of a Quan Treadwell. If you go back to last year's Under Armour All-American game, he flashed big time there. His high school highlights... There's blocking stuff. It's it's uncanny. So I'm like, Laquan Treadwell, Matt Corral. These are comps that I'm making, and these aren't reaches. These are big players. Now, the third player that I'm going to mention as far as our most valuable program transfer winning signing is Caden Priestcorn, who doesn't have the years of the other two, but this is why. Caden Priestcorn is somebody that is a legit threat in competition for Michael Trigg. If anybody can bring the best out of Michael Trigg, it's Caden Priestcorn. Plus, you've made the tight end room even better. 
So when you look at that, you have a chance to develop these pieces in your offense. Like, I think we're going to see some 12 personnel next year, but that is all dependent on Michael Trigg getting right. And if he gets right and everything goes well, he has all the talent in the world. I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how that might look. But if he doesn't, you do have that other option coming in in Caden Priestcorn. Good player. So you'll see him line up in a true tight end. I think you're going to see Michael Trigg play some slot receiver um, this year and kind of an A.J. Brown type slot player um, as far as the big body and all that. Just a matchup nightmare for the defense. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, for the 2023 team, and that's what most people care about, the 2023 team, because that is the next iteration of this football program. You know, Walker Howard probably won't be there. Chris Marshall won't be there. Some one and duns are going to pop into the equation. And probably the number one for 2023 is Monty Montgomery. This is a guy at Louisville that until he got a targeting call against Ole Miss, gave us fits in that game. Ole Miss ended up winning that game, but a lot of the movement happened after Montgomery had to leave the game for the targeting penalty. This is a good player. He's, he's what, 6'1", 6'2", 6 foot, somewhere in there, 215. He's not a large linebacker, but he's an active linebacker. Think Troy Brown from last year. That's the type of player Monty Montgomery is. And he's hyper-aggressive. He's going to play behind the line of scrimmage. He is honestly a perfect fit for a Pete Golding defense. I'm looking forward to that. Now, the next one is a cop-out. I, I truly understand that. But the three players signed on the offensive line. Ole Miss quietly has a five- or six-man class for the offensive line this year. They've added all-conference players in their respected respective conference, types of players, interior offensive linemen that play a certain way. And this will allow competition to develop, like we say all the time. The number one tenant of this program is competition, um, to develop and it to solidify there. Because we mentioned – that the pass protection issues that might have happened last year could have been the fact that the quarterback was holding the ball too long. The RPO read was happening too far downfield. Stuff like that could affect the way somebody that is run blocking 90% of every play um, and make them look worse than they really are. Now, I mean, there are some people that's figured out that, hey, you can really get after these guys. You can force a pass in the RPO and then rush normally. And if you do that, you have a chance to be really successful against this offensive line. We'll see if John Garrison has a little bit of a change um, in the offensive line that can help them in the pass protection thing. And the last person that I'm very excited about is Trey Harris from Louisiana Tech. If you look at him, I mean, I hate to do the comps over and over again. I mean, you could listen to Steve and he's like, hey, he's given basically a team of the century in his comps. And I get that. I understand what's going on. But – Similar to does not mean that. If that's you know, whenever you make a comp, comp you you're really just start describing a playing style, not a player. And the player is just the way to get to the player's playing style. Trey Harris is a physical, physical wide receiver from Louisiana Tech, all conference player. He honestly looks a little bit as a combination of Demorio Stringfellow, maybe a little Dante Moncrief thrown in. And he's going to line up on the other side of the field from a Chris Marshall, who, who we listed in our program thing. And we mentioned a lot of skilled players offensively. This team offensively has a chance to be really, really good. And I don't think that needs to fall between the cracks necessarily. Because, it, I mean, it honestly doesn't happen very often. But these are our top transfer additions. When we come back, we're going to turn the page a little bit to basketball. And we're going to talk about, honestly, where Ole Miss sits with Kermit Davis and basketball in general, as baseball is right around the corner. So stick around for that. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at the Super Bowl party is FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they have the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. 
So download FanDuel now so you can bet on bet on the Super Bowl. 57 with no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. You know, I love the props in the Super Bowl, and it's really interesting to see. They'll do things even like coin toss. The coin toss is either going to be heads or tails. You can bet on that. There's When the Super Bowl, there's not much that you can bet on. The national anthem time, that's always a fun bet there to where they say the national anthem time is going to be over or under a certain percentage. There's props all over this game, so everybody can get on that. And the sports book at FanDuel app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid on your instant, your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. All right, Locked On is heading to the Senior Bowl. Get inside access from the host that covered the NFL's next generation in college and find out which draft boards these players will be climbing. All in one location. Subscribe to the Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows from the Senior Bowl on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. All right, we're going to turn the page a little bit, and we're going to talk about Ole Miss men's basketball and Kermit Davis. And maybe it's time to start having and start thinking those uncomfortable thoughts, which honestly, I mean, we've probably been thinking them for two or three weeks at this point. But this basketball team is not good. There was a confidence problem through the season. Um, Even early on, whenever we didn't know they were going to struggle like this, there was a confidence problem that was developing. Like, you got Temple. This team beat Temple. Temple's going around beating everybody right now. That's just kind of what they do. This team beat Florida Atlantic. This team is then the only team to beat Florida Atlantic. This team, with confidence, when they were where they thought they needed to be, was not necessarily a pretty good team, but a chance to be a competitive team. You could see exactly what the thought process was. Now, As this team has developed and confidence has completely deteriorated, this team has struggled over and over and over again. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. What was seven-point losses in December became 12-point losses the first week of January, second week of January. Now it's up in the 17 to 20 range. It's deteriorating rapidly along with the interest in the fan base. Now, when you take my videos, like I'm probably going to cut this section up and release it as a standalone tomorrow. And it's important to know that this video is going to, as a standalone, will get 120 views, 130 views. And everybody's like, well, what what does that mean, Steve? What what are you talking about? Well, whenever I release a normal video, if you go back and look at my Locked On Ole Miss podcast, I get anywhere from 1,500 to 2,200. If it's below 1,500, I'm like, well, well, something went wrong. What happened? Was there an SEO problem? Was there something with the way I named it? But if I do a basketball video, it's 150 views. Nobody's watching those. Why? Well, the interest just isn't there at the moment. The Hope is gone. And when you deal with hope, you know, you need it. You need it to get people to invest time in what's going on, especially when Ole Miss is in a remote place like Oxford, Mississippi. So it's gotten to the point, and I I just, I hate to say this, but I think the end of the season is inevitable. What's going to happen at the end of the season is inevitable. But... You're probably going to cost yourself thousands of dollars by waiting to the end of the season. Like I said, I get why they wait to the end of the season. It doesn't really do much good to make a move early. There's there's not really help and assistance that can happen. But you have a team right now that people just aren't buying into at all. You have a team where players are starting to get suspended for personal reasons. 
weird stuff is happening behind the scenes. And that is a major warning sign before the break happens. They're still playing hard for Kermit. I'm not saying they're not playing hard for him. But the focus not necessarily might not necessarily be there. Like I said, Kermit's a good basketball coach. We all saw his teams at MTSU. But I think basketball just changed. And that style, much like Bobby Knight, would not be successful in today's basketball. You know, Dean Smith might not be successful in today's basketball. Good basketball coaches, but I just think the game has passed them by. They've almost become the modern generation's version of Pete Carrill. Whenever his Princeton guy was running essentially backdoor cuts and four corners basketball and beating teams 45 to 43. It just, I think it's just passed it by. Now the question becomes, where does Ole Miss go from here? Because honestly, there's a couple of choices and people might not want to have this conversation. And the reality of it is, with the way that football has built its calendar, we are just now getting to the point where we can transition over to something else for a couple weeks before spring football. And then we'll have the late transfer portal window. So it's not a gap like it was. December and January and all that, it's pretty full. The recruiting calendar kind of takes over. Same thing's going to happen in May. Spring football. So you basically have four months that you need to get through in a, as a content producer in this business. Baseball at Ole Miss is going to handle three of those months. So that kind of leaves you as basketball is a bonus. Now, I don't, you know, you build a hundred million dollar arena, you want people to sit on, you want to make money on it. Your goal is to turn that into a moneymaker. I'm not saying they shouldn't, anything like that. But for me personally, so far to this point, I've talked about basketball a little bit, but not much. I mean, if you go back and look at the videos, we have Tim Thomas on once a week, and we talk about basketball stories as they come up. Because otherwise, they're just a view count killer, uh, the way it sits with the fan base. And they can get better. It can be exciting. And it can make it to where March is a really big deal for the Ole Miss basketball program. Coach Yo is going to make the NCAA tournament this year. We are going to have probably as many Coach Yo segments by the end of it as we do Ole Miss men's basketball segments, Kermit Davis segments. But whenever they make the move, whenever they do it and they go, we'll have to see exactly how they do it. Because in the name of content, somebody that even does a daily show every day, Men's basketball isn't emphasized. I mean, it's a solid three right now. It's it's bonus content. I mean, it can be more. It can be excited. We'll talk about everything that goes on. But right now, I mean, it it's right there with women's basketball and stuff that we want to talk about. And if Keith Carter can't fix that, I mean, that's that's not my issue. That's I'm just going to keep going the way I'm going. But if they want basketball to have a seat at the table, to become a money-making enterprise, some things need to change. Because here's the other thing that people don't know much about. In the age of NIL, and Mississippi is always going to be not a wealthy state. So if Ole Miss is able to raise $10 million in NIL funds, where's that money going to go mostly? It's going to go to football, and it needs to go to football. Because for Ole Miss to be competitive in football, which we all want, it needs to go there. Ole Miss is one of the few places that's going to allocate a part of that NIL budget to baseball. And Ole Miss fans are going to want and need that. The the one that is going to become the runt of the litter and the 
is going to be men's basketball. And without NIL, can you accomplish the goals that you think you can accomplish without making a dent in football's NIL money? I mean, this is legit questions that we're all thinking about. But it just is what it is. Anyway, coming up in the next segment, we're going to talk about our new partnership and content with the Grove Report. Today, you might be watching this program on the Grove Report for the first time. Um, Welcome, if you are. And um, hopefully, as this evolves, it'll be a really, really cool thing. Anyway, we'll talk about that in just a second. Stick around. All right, thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first and listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and of course, comment down below or upvote the video itself. All right, big announcement at the end of last week. The Locked On Ole Miss podcast and the Grove Report has entered into a content partnership. And what that means is, you're going to see the Locked On Ole Miss podcast and the extra videos and some things audiovisually go to their website. You're going to see them over there. We're going to continue real similarly to what we're doing, but we now have a different place uh, or another place to put content. If you're watching it where you watch it, nothing's going to change. Don't worry about that. But if you're a Grove Report person tuning into this podcast for the first time, first of all, welcome. I hope you enjoyed. Our number one goal is to have fun and to cut through a little bit of the noise that happens because there's a ton of bias that happens, whether it's bias on your subscription amounts and subscription money, bias on you know your access. There's different things that control how you report things. Well, we don't have any of that. We can just tell it like it is. If they don't like us, they don't like us. I mean, it just really does not matter. So we will basically tell you what's going on from our perspective. And we're going to have perspectives of other people that come on this channel. Um, Tom Vanderford, who won't be in for a couple of weeks. Um, Derek Vandegriff, our baseball guy. Tim Thomas, a former player, our football guy. Bill Flowers, from time to time, stops by to talk football. So we have a lot of fun stuff that I hope you enjoy. Now, what they get is they get to come on and we're going to start using them as our perspectives. Because one of our perspectives that just hasn't quite been there has been the journalism perspective, has been the coverage perspective. And we've intentionally not really brought those on because of all the biases that we just talked about. Well, now, thanks to these guys, we're going to have them on the show. We're going to find a spot once a week and we're going to talk Ole Miss sports. We're going to talk about the things we need to talk about on top of all of our perspectives going on. And we're going to find a way to make this fun for you. Because at the end of the day, following Ole Miss sports should be fun. All of this is an escape. All of this is, you know, something different than your everyday life. You would not follow this in order to be a tortured fan. We do not believe in the tortured fan. Somebody that... um that claims like, oh, woe is me. The Dallas Cowboys will never win a Super Bowl. We're not into that. We are more into having fun and making following Ole Miss sports fun. Just is. We're going to find the angles that make it fun. We're going to talk about the reality that's going on so that you don't get blindsided. And we're going to find a news avenue through the guys at the Grove Report that we can add to our broadcast. It should be a ton of fun. I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to it. And we're going to do like a two minute and 30 second best of feature that is going to go up and be on their content on their website from that day's episode. And it'll have the embed link um, of the actual YouTube video. So I encourage every locked on Ole Miss listener to go ahead and subscribe, follow the Grove Report on Twitter, Um, Go to the website, look at all that information because it's honestly going to be worth it. These these are some good guys that work really hard. John John Macon, Gillespie, um, just he makes the trains run on time a little bit over there. So it is going to be good. I'm going to learn how to get all this this up for this today's episode, this Monday episode. So if there's problems, you know we're gonna we're gonna 
greasy will and all that. So we'll see exactly how it goes. But I am really, really excited about this. And hopefully as the future, we can just expand it and do more and more and more and more. And I'm sure once I get down there and get doing what I'm doing, one of the plans and one of the things that I do is I cover the Under Armour All-American game every year. And I'm sure this avenue through um, the Grove Report will provide another way and another thing that we can do with videos and things like that at the Under Armour All-American game. Maybe John Garcia Jr., put him on there. Um, so you'll see him quite a bit as well. It's going to be really fun, people. And I, I just want to thank you for, you know, participating in this ride. Because, you know, it's been fun. It, it's been fun. And the rapid ascent of this website, I'm very, very fired up for very fired up for. Also, before we get out of here, um, I just want to mention one thing that I forgot about mentioning in the second segment. Ole Miss went to Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma State just held up newspapers that said, thanks for our leftovers, and it was a picture of uh, like one of those styrofoam boxes, and Spencer Sanders was in there in Ole Miss. Okay. A, I understand they're students and they're having fun and all of that stuff. I, I, get, I get all of that. But when you have a former four-year starter who tried to go back to your school, allegedly, and you try and take a shot at Ole Miss, Ole Miss isn't at fault here. Ole Miss just took him. You are literally taking a shot at one of the best quarterbacks that has ever played at your school. It is absolutely bizarre to see them treat Spencer Sanders this way. It's uncalled for, it's classless, and they need it to, I don't know, refine their message um, if they want it to attack Ole Miss and not do it at that player. Because that player is essentially has been generational in Oklahoma State's history. I mean, if you watch him in the Fiesta Bowl in 2022, I guess it was January 2022, he absolutely beat Notre Dame almost by himself. It was impressive to see. And for Oklahoma State to phrase it the way they phrase it, to where take our leftovers, as in we're not using them anymore, when they're not winning games without him at this point, seems classless and disingenuous. So that's something I, I, ju I just wanted to say that because I don't know much about Spencer. He just got to Ole Miss. He's going to compete for the job, and I'm sure he's going to do it in, the, in a first-class way. But to do that at a basketball game, just randomly, that cheap shot, you know, I, I just don't know how, I, how that sits with me. From everything that I got, Spencer Sanders is – He's going to be a good dude. He's going to come here. He's going to compete for the job. If he doesn't win it, if he's, you know, he's probably going to go do something else before the season. Or if it happens in the season, like last year, you know, he'll probably drop down to the number three quarterback, maybe take a red shirt or something. I don't know. Um, it's a situation I've said many times that doesn't make much sense. Neither does the way Oklahoma State handled that last night. That was weird. That, that was very weird. Anyway, thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. Make sure to check out our brand new podcast. It's Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, you get to hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. It's Locked On College Basketball. It's available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, all new viewers coming in, thank you very much. We will see you tomorrow with more Ole Miss football. It's Ole Miss every day here. We'll check, we'll check you later. Peace.